Welcome back to another live video, my loves. Hello, 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 and welcome to Heaven on Earth. Welcome to my channel if you've never been here before. Welcome to this discussion on the evolution of consciousness. I am going to be filming one of these videos every single day for the next 30 days. It's a fun challenge for me to combat resistance, to kick it in the ass, and to also just, um, yeah, to share with you guys what I have been channeling what I've been feeling and learning and discovering on my journey. It's like insanely cool knowledge. It's blowing my mind and changing the way completely that I live and work and breathe and show up in the world. And I'm excited to share it with you too. Um, two books that I want to recommend. I only have one of them here, but this is Turning Pro by Stephen Pressfield. Um, this is phenomenal, like phenomenal. I'm going to read you a section. Okay, um, what am I going to read to you? It's, if you haven't heard of Stephen Pressfield, he's like an author's author. That's how I would describe him. He, uh, his career has spanned like decades, like 50 years or something ridiculous. I think he started writing in his early 20s um, and he wrote for like 20 years before anything of his ever got published. He um, talks about the sacrifice that it takes. He talks about a lot, but um, yeah, okay. This is what I want to read. It's about the distinction between the, um, the no, it's distinction between the amateur and the pro. And we're all start off as amateurs unless we're born in at a particular time in our soul's evolution where we've already turned pro and we just like have been imbued with the skills already. But for most of us on the planet right now, we start out pretty amateur. And this is the, the leap, the quantum leap that we take into being a professional in our art and in our lives. The amateur lives in the past. Because the amateur owns nothing of spirit in the present, she either looks forward to a hopeful future or backward to an idyllic past. But the past evoked by the amateur is make-believe. It never existed. It's a highlight reel that she edited together from events that took place, that almost took place or should have occurred. In a, or should have occurred. In a way, the amateur's reimagined past is worse when it's true. Because then it's really gone. The payoff of living in the past or the future is you never have to do your work in the present. This is like, oh my God, you guys, this was me. This was 100% me for so long. My main channel, if we're talking about Lorna um, Gabriel's like channels of consciousness or the way energy becomes matter, was the child sovereign channel. And I think I've spoken about this before in a live, but it was like, I was so in like my shadow child, just thinking like, Someone else is going to come and save me. Someone else is going to come rescue me. And this was like reinforced by a lot of the church, like stuff that I saw and went to. Um, I was in the Christian church for like five or six years, uh, worked my way up to be, well, not worked my way up, but got put in the position of being like a junior youth leader, like leading a youth group, um, like volunteering on Sundays, all of that kind of stuff. And there's this really pervading like illusion of consciousness in the Christian church around a savior, right? Like someone else, i.e. Jesus, is going to come and save us. This is a very, very persistent and problematic illusion of consciousness in the church. And Jesus is coming back. And it's like, we have to basically outsource our well-being, outsource everything for like this figure. And it like, quote unquote, works. I was thinking about this this morning, actually. It's like it, it's a, a transition from like the light God to the dark God is like the transition from the light and love Jesus to like almost back to the Old Testament God, but we're not going back obviously, but definitely like love as we haven't, have you, as you've never seen it before, you know, in those movies when it's like this actor, as you've never seen him before, um, that's what it feels like. It feels like this new love. It's always been love, but we're becoming aware of this new version of love is very like, old testament god like it's not compassionate will push us past our limits it's very like straight down the line and direct and for someone like i was at the time i was in like like chronic trauma and very like terrified um to the point where yeah a lot of things like i just couldn't do it was amazing and it was perfect for me to have that revelation of unconditional love to build that as my foundation to then move into this new era of consciousness because like without unconditional love you're really just like we well, can't move forward like you can't move you're literally like petrified um and you're frozen so it was really beautiful to have that like introduction to unconditional love or reintroduction i should say 
and remembrance of unconditional love so that I could move into this new era um, more freely. Um, but yeah, that was so me. Oh my God, stuck in the future, stuck in the past. Like, yeah, I guess petri being petrified is being stuck in the past because what magic is, is the ability to trust your inner knowing and your intuition and trust what you cannot see, right? To trust what you cannot see and you haven't experienced yet. So our magician is constantly like showing us things from the future or things that haven't happened yet that obviously make no sense to our rational mind because we haven't experienced them. So we can't quote unquote, our brain can't like know them as safe, but even safety is an illusion. So it's like being able to override that. I'm sorry, this is, I like, I'm not sorry, but I know that this is, can be a little bit convoluted. So I'm going to try and break it down as much as I can and just share my story. <sighs> so I, yeah, the, like the, the temptation is there to live in a future moment because if you don't know, if I didn't know, like I didn't know how to cultivate my own well-being in the present, right? I thought my well-being was sourced from events and outcomes and like I am, like I wanted well-being, right? And I wanted happiness. And the only way I knew how to experience joy and well-being and happiness was when I achieved something really good or great. Ah, this, okay, cool. This is making so much more sense now. Awesome. Let's go. Stay with me. Let's fucking go. Um, but when, but then, so I would continuously repeat the cycle and this pattern of trying to create these events and these achievements so that I could feel happiness and well-being, right? And so it's like, it's like when you, it's like when you have this idea in your head and this is very much like the child. Um, it's, you know, it's not a bad state of consciousness. It's just not real. It's like a shadow consciousness and we're developing out of that now. Um, so keep that in mind. It's not bad or wrong or shameful. It's just old. Like we just don't need it anymore. Um, but a child will like build or a child, someone in child consciousness will build up, will build up an idea in their head of how something could be because all they have is like based on p memories of past experiences. So they'll be like, okay, so last year I had a birthday party at like McDonald's or Chuck E. Cheese. Probably shouldn't have even said McDonald's on this video, but like Chuck E. Cheese or somewhere. And that was really great. So I'm going to project into the future. That was the last time I felt well-being. So I'm going to project into the future, a new party, and I'm going to put all my energy into creating that so that I can feel well-being again. Completely missing. If you think about illusions, like they're out here, right? Like a projector is like, it's projecting something out. The source is here. The source of the image is here. It's not that. And so when you're in illusion, life like passes you by like this. And you're here being like, hmm, I wonder why I feel unfulfilled. <laughs> because you're not claiming and understanding like, you're not experiencing yourself as the way that you were meant to experience yourself, which is as the source. Oh, I'm getting like full body chills right now. Um, as the source of the illusion and as the source of the realness, like the energy, everything, the source of everything, right? You're the source of everything. And so life is like from, you go from past to like future and you never actually land in the present because you're just going like this out here. And the trick and the, not trick, but like the, the secret, the key, the whatever, is to come back to here and be like, hang on a minute. I, and this is like, this was so hard for me. Oh my God. And I'm still working on this. Like I'm still working on bringing my, you know, becoming, remembering that I am the source of my own well-being. And I love myself. That's what it is. It is from a deep place of recognition that I am unconditional love and that I am love and a commitment to my, out of a commitment to myself and devotion to myself, that I continually make this decision to bring my awareness back to the present moment. And rather than going from like projecting ideas, it's really tempting sometimes to be like, I'm going to create an idea in my head and it's gonna create, be the source of my well being. Um, but cultivating that inner well being, right? Becoming like the well of being and coming back to the knowledge and the certainty, the assuredness that we are the source of our own well being and just experiencing ourselves as that, right? And so every time we like, I just catch, catch myself, like every time I find myself going out into like, yeah, whatever, I just bring it back. I'm like, I'm the source of my well being. I am the source of my well being, not the future, not the past. 
not like anything outside me, not an external like success or achievement or validation. I'm the source right here. And it's so fucking hard. Like it's so fucking hard because we've literally been conditioned to the exact opposite. Because if you think about it, a population where, oh, I don't know, I don't want to get into the sinisterness of it, but a population that is, you know, continuously living anywhere but the present is a lot more easily controlled because you can kind of slip things under the radar or get things past them a lot easier. Um, Cause you know, people aren't there. They're not present with what's happening. They can only kind of chart things in hindsight and retrospect. That's why we have like, it's really cool to sometimes look back and see the patterns throughout history. And we can do that in hindsight. But when you have this kind of like awareness and knowledge, what I'm feeling is I'm not there yet, but as I experience more of it, I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. So we can actually see patterns before they emerge and experience them as they emerge. And then also like, there's no need to fear anything so that you can, you can just like literally just be well in the present and just be in the present. And then you experience life as it's happening, which is the exact how we're supposed to live, which is the key to thriving. Right. Um, Oh, so much, you guys. This is, I'm going through a really, really intense like initiation at the moment and it's giving way to like all these fucking incredible insights and downloads and visions and wisdom. Um, and it's also just like, I can feel my, not my brain, but like my mind expanding. Um, and it is like, like there's a part of me that's like, this is terrifying, but I don't actually feel fear like there's little bits of resistance that pop up every now and then but it's not like ah i'm not frozen with it which is cool because fear is an illusion ah. okay i love you and i will see you in my next video leave a comment if you want to